This is the so-called bonfire of the regulations. Yes. But there is a little problem, isn't there, which is that when uh, Britain leaves the European Union, mm. we're not going to be covered by those laws which we have under European law. So as I understand it, the Great Repeal Bill will actually put those laws into English law. Yes, there's an irony to it uh, as a Brexiteer to have all these laws actually added to UK law. But it is true, things like regulations are directly applicable if you're an EU member. Uh, uh, when we cease to be an EU member, they're no longer directly applicable. So they have to be wrapped into the Great Peel Bill. And so do decisions of the Court of Justice, the ECJ, um, whereas directives are actually transposed into UK law. So the whole thing will be put, like downloaded, into one uh, act of parliament, and that will be the Great Repeal Bill. So where is is the opportunity coming, in your view, to eliminate a lot of these regulations? Well, I mean, if you if you think of it in terms, it's 700,000 pages overall. It, it's it's the height of Nelson's column in terms of paper. Um, what will happen after you get the re Great Repeal Bill in there is that then you have the opportunity to bring in legislation to scrap or appeal or change those laws mm. over time. And I think that's very exciting. The Working Time Directive is a a, a you know a, a source of real worry to the business community, the cost of that, four billion or more a year. That is probably a, a good example of a starting place. Uh, but there's a lot more to find. But the truth is yeah. a lot of these regulations were actually put in there to protect the consumer and to protect the worker. And you as a member of the European Parliament mm -hmm. presumably supported some of them. Well, some Are you of, saying yes. we don't need yeah. those protections anymore? No, I mean, what you're talking about is over-regulation, going beyond what you need to. I mean, the EU uh, itself estimated that we pay a hundred billion more every year than the United States, for example, in comparison yeah. terms. Now, not saying we go to US regulation yeah. levels, but somewhere in between that, I think, would help yeah. the economy. I mean, I mean, just to give you one trivial example, if you buy a mug in America and you put it in the dishwasher, mm. whatever picture was on it washes off. It doesn't happen over here yeah. because of yeah. the regulations. Yeah. Well, I mean, but it, it, the, the key point is it will be up to Westminster what we keep and what we get rid of, but there's a huge Massive, opportunity. It must not work, though. I mean, uh, you know, when you see these headlines saying piles of red tape. I mean, a lot yeah. of that red tape we actually will want to keep. We're, we're well, to, to, to as I say, people. it's over-regulation. It's as well as go temporary agency workers directive, for example, in the business community. Again, is a worry, two to three billion a year. Do we need to keep that? that is yeah. that really essential? Well, that, but we on the other hand, do we it. want to be like America where people don't get maternity pay? Uh, no, we don't. We want to so keep we do that, want to don't keep we? Some of it, no, we yeah. want to keep some of it. I mean, we're not intending to you know, destroy all of it. But the point is, uh, the British Parliament can debate all of this. That's the beauty. I mean, I'm afraid, you know, we're stuck with it. Any the debate, debate is stuck of paper with it. The, the, the size of Nelson's yeah. column, yeah. that's going to take some hours, isn't well, it? Well, what an opportunity. It's not a negative thing. Uh, what I actually encourage businesses to do, particularly, or any op you know, anyone concerned with EU law, is to come up with 10 key EU laws you want to get rid yeah. of. Now, I want to ask about the crested <laughs> newt, because this is yeah. one that is often yeah, cited, yeah. that yeah. Yeah. building projects have been held up because it's been a habitat for the, for the crested newt. Yeah. Some people would say that's a good thing, and it's got actually nothing to do with the European Union, and it's got with the uh, British love of wildlife. Well, I, I mean, I'm not in favour of killing lots of newts. No, that, that, that's not so the, you would the keep intention. The newt no, the, the point is, we have a lot more in Britain. They're not really endangered in Britain. They are in other parts of the EU. And it's a classic case of sort of an EU law right across the uh, scope there that uh, isn't really necessary. So you wouldn't protect the crested newt? Well, not in the same way. Uh, I mean, you wouldn't get rid of them as such, but I mean, you, you know, yeah. it would just be more sensible and more applicable to. to yeah circumstances in Britain. But isn't there a basic um, basic problem here, which is a sort of systemic one? I mean, I have, over the years, experienced many pushes on red tape from within the European Union, from within the British government. But in the end, you guys are lawmakers. You're not law destroyers. I mean, you do stack them up. Don't yeah, you? but I'm afraid you, uh, you know, I'm a member of the European Parliament. I see it up close. That it, this is not a democratic, accountable machine you're dealing with. As a result, we get a lot of bad laws and a lot of over-regulation. And there's a huge opportunity here. I think it's a wonderful opportunity to look at it all again, not to get rid of it all, but you can tweak it it, you can repeal things that really aren't necessary. And I think it's going to benefit the economy hugely. Yeah.